There we go. Okay, so now we're recording. Again, thank you everyone for taking the time to be with us here on this call today. Um, I'm really excited to be a part of this, and I'm really excited to be sharing information with all of you. It's um, There isn't a better time to be part of eNagic. That is the absolute truth right now. If you take a look at what's going on around the company, outside of our huge, uh, rapidly growing organization, if you look at what's happening over in Eastern Asia and even just in Los Angeles, the way uh, this business is growing so fast and the people that we're reaching, um, it's important for us to be prepared for what's to come. And we need to be not only building and developing our own skills, but we need to be getting to a place where we can help share those skills with others and help train our new people and give uh, new people coming into this business this, uh, an equal opportunity to, to succeed, but most importantly, to become independent from you. And, and I think for those of you that were at the training this past weekend with that John and, De, John and Christine Deasy put on, wow, it was incredible um, hearing from John and Christine, Carlos, Kongan Joe, and JB Pacifico. I mean, one of the things that I really got from, from this weekend is, is duplication is so critical in our business. And um, I mean, please guys, take this from me. I, um, the first 50 or so sales that I made in Enagic were all on my own. I didn't have anyone uh, helping me to do this because I didn't know how to get people started. I didn't really know how to get people trained and motivated. And that's why um, Dan and I are working so hard to make sure that you guys, that you, you all are trained and properly motivated for your business because um, I just, I, it wasn't that I didn't have support because Carlos was an incredible support to me. I just wasn't in a place where I was personally uh, self-motivating mo self and I wasn't able, I didn't have the skills to teach and train new people. So we're trying to help everyone do that. And one of the best ways to train and develop your new people, especially if you don't know how to teach or train, is to get them plugged in because we're doing all the legwork for you. We have this call available. We have the, the Saturday events at, at Enagic that we have going on. We have one this Saturday from 1 to 3.30. We're going to be doing a demo, a full demo, a full business presentation. They're going to see the big picture of Enagic. They're going to get to see it all. So make sure that you're there on Saturday at 1 o'clock. Make sure that you have guests there as well because that event is designed to close people it's designed to get the new people coming in the door to see what this is all about to see the big picture to get excited about it and then we're going to take a short break after the after the product demonstration and they're going to have the opportunity to go out into the lobby and do their paperwork and leave there with their machine that day and their Nespa in their ukon order and be excited to start this with you that's what those Saturday events are designed for. I cannot stress enough how effective they are at converting sales. So, and, it, and it's, not, it's not to present, it's not necessarily myself or Dan or the people that are putting the event on. It's the fact that there are so many people there. There's social proof. There's a lobby full of people. It's Saturday. People are, are doing stuff. They're out, they're out and about. They're taking action. It's, a, it's a, the best day to be in action in, in uh, your Enagic business, for sure. So Saturday, uh, those events are powerful. And then um, the Saturday morning call, the 9 a.m. call, I was just talking to a few people yesterday about this. When, when you start your Enagic business, you don't really know what to say to people, and you're kind of, uh, kind of shy and timid at times, and, and you just don't know how to approach people. If you get on the Saturday morning calls at 9 a.m. with Eli and Jelena Daffish, and you listen to those calls, and you listen to the recording of it a few times throughout the week, if you do that consistently for a few weeks, you will know what to say, you will know how to approach people, and you will know what to do in the beginning parts of your business because that is what they cover every single week on that call. It's so simple. They, they set it up. They talk about what's going on, they get you excited, and then, and then Eli does a phenomenal job of interviewing that week's, that week's guest speaker and getting in for, literally, 
talking to them about how they're talking to people and what they're saying and what their approach is and what's working. You're getting gold from the pros being on that call and it's free. It, but it astonishes me how many people are not getting on that call consistently. It's, you know, I like to listen to it live, 9 a.m. Saturday morning. It's the best way to get my day started. And I am definitely in action, high level action after listening to that call. You can listen to it on the recording, but I like to listen to it live. And then I like to listen to the recording a few more times throughout the week. So if you're, if you're wondering what to say to people, getting plugged into those calls, getting plugged into this training, coming to every live event that you can, the Las Vegas event coming up, so big. This is the last huge event of the year, last major event before probably the big Okinawa event, which will be next March. So tickets are still available for this. It's very inexpensive to get to Las Vegas. You can get your flights really cheap. I, I think you could still get round trip flights for under three hundred on um, on Alaska, on Southwest, and I think Spirit as well. Um, hotel rooms are it's a five star hotel room for about one hundred and seventy dollars a night. You only need really need to be there two nights, share a room with someone, get your event ticket. They're one hundred and seventy nine dollars uh, through the end of this month, but it's a multi day event, and there's a lot of Phenomenal speakers here. I'm not going to go through the whole list of speakers because, uh, well, it's long. But there's some there's some heavy hitters that, that are going to be there, and this is going to be an event you do not want to miss. And more importantly, you want to make sure that you have your team, especially new people, at this event as well. Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, about getting new getting new distributors started. Right, if you're brand new, I know we do have some brand new people on the call today. That's awesome uh, you, because you're the most important person in this business. The one, the, if, you just get, if you just got your machine or if you, uh, you're still working to get your machine, you, you're, you've seen the business plan a few times, but you're excited to start talking to people, this is where you need to be. Um, you're the most important person in Enagic because you're the future of Enagic. Of Enagic. And we want to make sure that everyone's getting trained right and the people are out there talking to people responsibly about this business and about this technology that we have. Because what I'm seeing, what, I, what I'm experiencing, what I'm seeing out there in the field is a lot of, a lot of excitement from people, but um, they, they kind of call it, call it in this business, ignorance on fire. And people are excited, so what they do is they go out there and they just start talking to every person they know about Kangen water or Enagic, and well, usually it's Kong and water, and, and they're spewing information all over people, and they don't even realize that they're, that they're blowing an opportunity to really expose someone to what Enagic really is. Because if you were on the call a few weeks ago when we had Don Prosser on, he was talking about the founder, Mr. Oshiro, and how it, Mr. Oshiro doesn't want us to drink Kong and water. He wants us to be happy. You see, most people think that the, the Enagic business is about Kong and water, okay? Because we sell Kong and water machines. But the reality is Enagic is not about Kong and water. Enagic isn't even about physical health. Enagic is about overall true health. That's physical health, that's spiritual health, that's financial health, that's emotional health, that's relationship health. That's what true health is. Mr. Oshiro wants us to be happy in a word. And when we expose Kong Enagic as just being this Kongan water company, then people miss the rest of it. And maybe they're not a water snob. Maybe they're not that interested in their health. They're interested in something else. Something else drives their why, their passion. We miss the opportunity to expose that person to what Enagic really is because we were just talking about this water. Because maybe we went up to them and said, oh, what kind of water are you drink?" And they, don't, they didn't really give you a, a very engaging answer. Like they don't really care so much about water. And then all of a sudden we're trying to shove a $4,000 machine down their throat. We missed an opportunity. We want to take advantage of those opportunities by making sure that we're, that we're first asking people enough questions 
that we understand what it is that they want from life. Because what most people are doing, and, and, uh, and by the way, I'm not here to beat anyone, anyone up that is doing these things because we've all done them. I've done them. And that's probably why I'm sharing this because I want you, I want everyone here to win and I don't want people to make the same mistakes that I made early on. So what most people are doing is they're asking simple questions like, oh, what kind of water do you drink? Or are you into your health? And then they leave it there. Then they, they cut right into, well, I have this amazing water that has microclusters and it has you know, antioxidants and molecular hydrogen and all this stuff. And all of a sudden, people, they put up their defenses and it's like, we missed that opportunity. You know, maybe, maybe just because you see them at the gym doesn't mean that, that they're after the, the best water on the planet. Maybe that isn't the highest priority for them. Priority, priority for them may be getting their kids college paid for. Maybe their highest priority is getting um, an operation for their sick mother or getting, uh, getting care for an, an aging parent or something, something going wrong with one of their children. Okay, but when, so, so when we get into that part of a person's life, that's when we can really find out how we, have, that's how we can really help them. When we get the emotion, and I think, I think Christine Deasy really set it up well this weekend um, in sharing with how compassionate she is with the people that she talks to. She gets that emotion out of them. Why? Because she gets into their life. How does she get into their life? She asks them questions and she listens. It's not that hard. You'll be amazed what people let or, or what people are willing to share with you when you just ask simple questions and sit there and listen instead of thinking about what you're going to say next or uh, thinking about how you're going to pitch them on Kongan water as they're sharing their, their, their deepest feelings with you or their, 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 uh, their most heartfelt pain. See, we want to get that pain from them so that we can find out how we really help them. And I hope that makes sense because that's something that I have recently found to be absolutely vital in, the, um, in my personal success. Because what we get happening then, when we, when we take the time and we build that relationship, when we find out what it is, what that pain is, what that wound is, what it is that's keeping that person or that family from having what they want or, or being who they want to be, then we have power. Then they come to us for the solution, not us pushing something on them. They're, they're then attracted to us. Then they want to know what it is that we, can, that we have that, can, that we can offer them. So it's very, very powerful. Um, I, want to bring, I actually want to bring Dan on for a few minutes uh, just to kind of share any, any thoughts that he has. Because Dan has, Dan, Dan has had tremendous success in, uh, in helping uh, new distributors have early success in the business. So I just want to kind of have you weigh in on some of your, uh, some of your thoughts on that, Dan. I'm going to try to, there we go. You should be unmuted. There you go. Okay. Well, what I will say on that is, um, you know, even for myself, it really has been a process. You know, I look back at people that came into my business, you know, in, in the past and, you know, I, I wasn't really, and maybe I wasn't ready for them or I wasn't you know, in a spot where I was able to teach and help, but excuse me, by the way, Liz has got me eating soup here, but, um, I, uh, it's something that's really me and Liz kind of took on when we went to Mexico last January and just about manifesting, you know, what do we want to be the kind of people we want to bring into our business. And, um, I think that that's helped a ton because not only do I feel like, um, I've developed into somebody who's ready for the people that are coming into our life, but, um, but ready to guide them to the next step as well. I mean, we just brought in, you know, a great group of girls yesterday. And I think Dana's on this somewhere and I think she's listening, but you know, her and her and her, um, significant other getting involved and, <clears throat> you know, they're just so incredibly fired up and ready to share this with people. And I just don't know that in the, that in the past, um, I was quite ready to, to be the kind of person that the people that are under me or that work with me need. And I think it's a process for all of us. So, um, you know, it's a learning curve, whether you're a 1A, a 3A, a 6A, a 6A, 2-2. I mean, I think the biggest thing is to always be open to 
be open to new ideas and to be in a better version of yourself, you know? Yeah, and that's what it's all about, really, is it's about who, who we become along the process. You know, it doesn't, at the end of the day, you know, six years from now, 10 years from now, um, you know, it's not going to be, of course, the money's going to be great and all the, you know, all the people we help along the way is, is obviously the greatest part, but um, it's who we become. It's the, it's the leader you become. It's the husband you become, the father you become, the grandparent you become. And, um, and what you've created for your family. So that's, uh, that's, you know, and the other thing is, if I can add this, Steve is, you know, in the, and if really, if you level up and Carlos uses this phrase all the time, you know, raise your gaze and, you know, and, and, you know, some people may buy into this, some people don't, but, you know, just really the energy that you're putting out there and the energy that you're allowing in your life. And I, I feel like that's bringing the kind of people into my business that, that I want to be there. And so, um, you know, I think, I think manifestation is a very, very cool thing that I've only recently really started to understand the ramifications of, but I really do believe that, you know, you're kind of a product of the people you hang around and, you know, luckily you're one of the ones I hang around. But the thing is, is, um, you know, I'm attracting really, really good, positive people into my life and, you know, the business is showing that. So. Yeah, and that's so true. I, you know, Dan, I talk to you uh, literally every single day and, and every single day, it's I mean, you you have something going on, and it's always something positive. It's something moving forward in your business. It's very very rare, and we share you know we share our struggles with one another. But Dan, it's very rare that you know you have me on the phone, and you're just like jacked about someone or something. I mean, it's you you almost you always have good things going on, and and that's uh, a great uh, it's just a great example of what you just talked about. You know. You know, the fruit, the fruit you, pr you produce a lot of good fruit because you're, you're out there sowing action and, and talking to the right people and, and becoming a better person yourself. Appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, Dan. Um, and looking forward to Saturday, so we'll see you all there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, by the way, uh, if, you're just, if you're just joining us, we do have an event this upcoming Saturday at Enagic uh, in Linwood. Please make sure that you're there. Please have guests there. It's going to be a phenomenal time. It's going to be very powerful. We are going to go uh, in depth. We're going to show some different looks. We're always changing things up and we're always keeping things fresh. So there, there's going to be some things in the product presentation that maybe you didn't see last time. And there's going to be some things that Dan goes over in the business plan that maybe you didn't see last time, or maybe you're seeing a different perspective of it. So Again, not only being plugged into trainings and things, but but being on uh, seeing the the, the, pres the different presentations a number of different times from a number of different angles is very important because my demo, my presentation is a hybrid of what I saw from Carlos when I was growing up in this business and what I've seen from Dan, what I've seen from Sam Tran and what I've seen from Shan Stratton and all kinds of other people. You know, so we actually begin to um, take bits and pieces from different presentations and, and it becomes our own. So it's very important to see it from different angles, but also to familiarize yourself with our company and our business. And I can't stress enough the importance of learning to at least show someone what happens in the first 10 sales of their Enagic business. If you could just take someone from their first sale out to 3A in terms of showing the business to them, then you're going to make a lot of money here. Then you're going to have, you're going to have a lot of success and you're also going to have duplication in your business. Most people don't know how to draw out the business plan. I'm not saying you have to be an expert at it. I'm not saying you have to understand it inside and out. But the first 1A to 3A is simple. Just understand how that works and how you can show someone how they can get their machine for free. One of the most powerful things you can learn early on in this business. Some other things that are important for uh, getting started or developing really uh, great habits in this business is cashing out. And you're gonna hear this over and over and over again. We use this, this is almost a universal phrase, especially in our Pacific Northwest group. I'm not really sure who came up with it. I think it was Carlos that started using this principle of, of cashing out every day. And this list has evolved over the years, but you know, when you get down to it, this is all we do in Enagic. 
So every activity, every income producing activity in your business can be summed up on this sheet here. And if you want this, please reach out to me, uh, email me steve at truehealthvision.com and I'll send it to you because you want this. What's on here is it tells you essentially what you need to do each day to make money in your business. And it shows you a way of tracking and you can create your own system, but this is something that has worked for me. This is how I track my productivity, how, how I know that I'm, I'm doing things every day and that I'm staying active. So some examples of cashing out are, have you identified or interviewed a new prospect for your Enagic business today? If you did this, then you made money in your business. Okay, what does that mean? Identify or interview someone. If you're in Starbucks and you're standing in line and the person in front of you has really nice shoes and you compliment them, you say, hey, nice shoes. Where'd you get those? And you have a, a three minute conversation back and forth with them. And you say, hey, you're really sharp. I think I might have something you'd, you'd be interested in. What's your, is it, how can I reach you? Or what's the best time to get a hold of you? Or you know, maybe you already know how to reach them. You get their phone number, you exchange information. You didn't talk anything about water, you just met them, you asked them a few questions. You identified them as someone who might be a candidate for either your business or retailing of Kong and Water. Great, you've cashed out in your business today. And by the way, there's a lot of different schools of thought on this, but for the most part, I don't like to bring up the water or an opportunity in the very first conversation, unless it's someone that is desperate, unless it's someone that is in dire straits and I'm pro I may never see them again. But if it's someone that I, you know, it's an employee, I know where they work, I know where to find them. Uh, they, they readily give me their contact information, which I'm pretty good about getting people's, people's information. I don't have a problem with that. Um, then I don't, usually mention the water the first time. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to scare someone off. I'm just trying to make friends. And Carlos told me early on, he said, the longer someone go, the longer someone doesn't know what I do, the better chances I have. And I've kind of found that to be true. If I, if I frequent the same drive through coffee stand for six months and I get to know that per that barista really, 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 really well, and I'm still a mystery. She doesn't know anything about what I do, but she sees that I drive a nice car and she sees that I'm put together and that I'm always in a hurry and that I always have good things going on. I'm always happy and I'm in a good mood. She's gonna be curious about what I do. And when I tell her, or when, I, when I'm the one that offers her an opportunity, the day that she, that she decides to complain about her job, she's gonna take that offer with validity and it's gonna, it's gonna have value because she sees me. I haven't been here trying to pitch her for six months, but all of a sudden, she, the one day she, her window seems to be open, her window of opportunity, here I come along offering an opportunity. She already trusts me. She feels, feels like she knows me just because I'm a good listener. So I hope that makes sense. That's how we have power in this business. So we don't have to be out there pitching Kong and water or an amazing opportunity from the very first conversation. Okay, we're gonna let somebody else do that. Which brings us to the next part. How else to cash out? Introduce a new prospect to a third party. Third party could be a lot of different things. That could be a colleague, me, Dan, Liz, Sarah, Ann, Tristan, Carlos, Chris, anybody, anybody but you. It can be the Enagic office. It could be a live video. It could be something, uh, any of the videos that are out there on YouTube. If you go to my YouTube channel, I have all of these webinars recorded, but I also have a, a whole slew of information. There's all the Dr. Michael videos are on there, all the video demos, business plans, different research, all kinds of stuff's on there. Go on there, steal those videos, share them with other people. Um, another third party would be a live or recorded conference call. You got them to the Enagic office, you brought them to an event, that's a third party exposure, a, th a three-way phone call. Very powerful, it's a quick, it, it can be done in two or three minutes or less. Hey, I just wanna introduce you to my colleague, Dan. He's a really sharp guy, we've been working together for a couple of years, you're gonna love him. And then get Dan on the phone with them, let them make that connection, then 
then we have more power in our relationship. I could bring Dan into that conversation anytime going forward from there. If I get stuck with that person at any point in the future, I can get Dan involved in the conversation. Dan can help get me unstuck. And it's completely natural. It's not weird. It doesn't seem, seem like I'm bringing in my closer. Because that's what people think when you get a third-party exposure too late. If you, if you share water with them and told them your story and then you get them to a demo and then you show them the business and then they get stuck on something and they decide, you know, they're asking questions or they're coming up with objections when they should be doing paperwork and then you introduce them to Dan, they're going to think that Dan is your closer and you only brought Dan in to get them on paper, which is probably true. But when you introduce Dan from the very beginning, hey, this is my colleague, Dan. He answers a lot of my questions. If I, if I ever get stuck on something, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask him. I'm going to bounce it off of him. Yeah, of course. It's completely natural. It's cool. Then when they have a question, oh, you know what? I'm not 100% sure. Let me ask Dan real quick. I get Dan on the phone. And we're having a two-minute conversation. So it's completely normal for me to bring Dan into the conversation. So we don't want people to get stuck. Carlos calls it being alone on an island. I love that expression. Because when you're alone on an island with someone, it's just you and them. When they get stuck, when they come up with an objection, you're the only person that can answer it. It's not a good place to be. Okay, other ways to cash out. You set a future appointment. That's easy. That takes less than 10 seconds. Set an appointment. It could be an in-person appointment. It could be a phone appointment. It could be a three-way call. You, it could, you could just set up a time to have a three-way, a two-minute three-way call with someone. You, you set an appointment. You made money in your business. A live demo. Invite them to a, a presentation. If you got on the phone with someone today and invited them to Saturday and they agreed to come, then you cashed out. You made money in your business today. Give yourself a check mark. Okay. Doing these simple things every single day is how you build a business. It's how you develop consistency. And it's how you make money as a habit. It sounds silly. It sounds silly, silly simple, really. But these things are the keys to how this business works. Okay, another way to cash out is by educating a prospect. Could be a live demo, could be a video demo. You got them on this call. Okay, that counts as cashing out. This is a business presentation, this is a training, this is teaching people how to duplicate your organization. Okay, another way to cash out is obviously if you process a product order, you sold a machine, you went up and, and did paperwork for an UCON or an NESPA or an SD501 or whatever, any product, then you cashed out. You made money in your business today. Even if you sold a filter to someone in your downline, you made money in your business. Check, check, check it off. Give yourself credit. If you don't make a product sale every single day, that's okay. Now, of course we want to, but if you don't make a product sale every single day, how else can you cash out? You can cash out by giving water to a brand new person, okay? So I actually, I, I allow the option of having either processing an order or sharing water with a brand new person. Then I can check off that box as well today, okay? So I didn't have anyone buy a machine from me. I'm gonna go to the gym and I'm gonna to talk to someone, I'm gonna to talk to people, I'm gonna find someone, I'm gonna set the intention to hand water to a brand new person today, okay? This is important. Invest 40 minutes in self-development, okay? That could be reading, prayer, meditation, exercise. You got on this call today, you cashed out. This is personal development. This is helping you to become a better uh, business person, a better leader a better influencer, a better motivator. You are becoming a better person. Um, I hope you're becoming a better person by being on this call. And uh, then this, this is considered training. You can, you can cash out for today. Now, the important thing is, yes, we wanna be self-motivating, we wanna be plugged in, we wanna be training, and we always wanna be learning, but we, we don't wanna be spending six hours doing training every day and cash ourselves out six times. We wanna be doing this once a day and keep it to a limit, keep it within an hour. There's too much, there's a such thing as too much, okay? We wanna make sure that we're still doing the action steps 
that produce money in our business. Now, yes, self-development does make us money because it makes us better people, but we want to make sure we want to make sure that we're taking action. Because I know one thing that happened with me when I first started was I did this thing called getting ready to get ready. And a lot of people, a lot of other people do that too. And that's that, okay, I got my machine. I got my distributor ID. Now I have my website. Now I have my business cards. Now I have my little home office set up and I have my own little laptop set up just for business. And I have my demo kit and I have all this stuff. I'm doing all this stuff to get ready to start doing my business. So then what? Then I want to learn everything. So I start studying and I, I do all these things to prepare to start my business. And then next thing you know, it's six months later and you haven't made a sale, but you have this really nice office and all these really nice business cards and all this stuff, but no business. Okay, you don't need all that stuff in the beginning. All you need is a piece of paper to write a list of people on, to write names of the names of the people that you're going to talk to on in your phone. That's all you need. You don't need a website. When you get your machine, they give you an ID number. You get a free website from Enagic anyway. You have everything you need. You don't need to get, go out and buy an ORP meter. You don't need to buy this elaborate demo kit. If you want to do a demo, you need some pH drops, a tea bag, maybe some sesame oil. That's it. A bottle of Dasani and some cups. Okay. It doesn't take any more than that to sell a machine. Romeo Videro, one of the one of the highest ranking sponsors in Enagic, for his on his way to 6A, he went out and he bought 50 bottles of Enagic pH drops. That's all he had to do his demo. And he did demos with just pH drops until he was in 6A. He didn't do tea bag, he didn't wash tomatoes, he didn't do ORP, he didn't emulsify oil. All he did was pH drops. So you don't need a lot of tools. You don't need a lot of knowledge. You don't need to explain how Kangen water works in the cell. Okay, all you need to do is get really, really good at inviting people to meet someone that you work with. It's that simple. Edify the person that you want them to meet. Is it me? Is it Dan? Who's your upline? Who's your sponsor? Who's your sponsor or sponsor in the business? Have you talked to them? Have you ever met them? Find out who they are. Give them a call and just introduce yourself. Okay, but it's really important to be able to edify the person that you want to introduce to them because you're setting that person up as the expert. Okay, hey, Liz, I really want you to meet my colleague, Dan. Okay, he's sharp as a tack. He, was in, he worked in the car business forever. He's great with people. Okay, and he knows more about this than anyone I know. If you have... If I put him on the phone with you, would you give him three minutes, Liz? Of course you would. Of course you would. But if I just say, hey, I want you to meet this guy and talk to this guy that showed me this thing, then you're probably not going to really take that for a lot of you. You have no idea what you have no idea what I'm putting what I'm setting you up for. But if I tell you, hey, look, I've known this guy Dan for three years. He sharp as attack. He was with, it was with. Lexus and Toyota forever. He knows more about this than anyone I know, and everyone loves him. It's one of the most personable guys I know. If I put you on the phone with him for two minutes, would you talk to him? What are they going to say? No? Of course not. Okay, I just, I just set Dan up for success. Hey, I, I really want you to meet my colleague, Carlos. I've known Carlos for four years. He's earned seven figures in this business, and he went from living on someone's couch to earning set seven figures in a short period of time. You need to talk to this guy. Besides, you're going to love him. That's how you set someone up. Introduce them. Provide value. Make them valuable. And you'll, you'll be surprised how much more receptive people are to listening and talking or to, to getting on the phone with them or having that third-party exposure. When I have someone new at the office, one of the, the, the first thing I do is I walk right over to Dan or whoever's there. And I usually try to make sure that someone I know is going to be in the office when I have new people joining me. Why? I can easily walk them through that office and show them and tell them every single thing they would ever need to know about Enagic, Kong and Water, Ukon, the Inespa, 
probably even the history of the company. I could probably give a better history of the company than most of the people who walk through that office, but I don't do that. Why? Because I'd rather a third party do that. I want them to be familiar with someone else. So I walk them over to Dan or I walk them over to Sam Tran or I introduce them to Liz or to Ann or Ken or someone other than me. And they have a much better chance at enrolling in what we're doing because they're hearing it from someone else. It's not just me. It, it, it takes me out of the equation, essentially. I'm no longer the problem. And let's say down the road, they choose not to get involved. Well, if you're not the problem, if you're not part of the problem, if you, then it's not going to be weird. Okay? Your relationship with them can continue. But what happens is when people are alone on an island with someone and they're the only person exposing them to this, they're the only one that they're talking to, and then it goes sideways, which it often does, and they decide not to join you, then it, can, it often hinders the relationship. Then that person will stop taking your phone calls. Okay, we see it all the time. We don't hear from someone for a couple of years because we lose our trust. We just become that salesperson. Every time we call them, we're talking to them about water. Don't be that guy with people. Be normal. Be, be someone who, remember, the key is we want to have enough people to talk to that we don't always have to chase people down the street and hit them over the head with things and, and, and just chase them. We shouldn't be chasing anyone. People should be coming to us. If someone doesn't answer my phone call, I don't call them back for at least a week. I don't, call, I, don't, I don't call them the next day okay? because I have enough people to talk to. I got too many other people to talk to. Okay, so we want to make sure that we're, we're conveying this to our new people. That we're, we're busy. We're in a hurry. We have something that we have a lot going on because what we do is valuable. And if there's something that you get from this call today, one message, I want you to get this. What we do is valuable. It is tremendously valuable. Okay. Sharing water with someone is a privilege. It's a privilege for them that we are willing to give them this water. Okay, we're providing an opportunity for so much value in someone's life. Okay, anyone that's been a part of this long enough has had their life changed by this business, the water, the culture, you name it, all of it. My life has been changed by all of it in every single way. Okay, so I know exactly what we're offering. I know what we have to offer and it's huge. Okay, but do you know? Okay, what we have is very, 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 very valuable. And if we hold, if we keep that idea in our mind when we're talking to people, then that'll come through. If we're unsure, if we're not confident about what we have to offer, then people aren't, people are gonna sense that too. So just be, just know what you have. It's gold, guys. But don't be too zealous, if you will, so that we scare them off and they don't have the opportunity to see it. Because I think the biggest problem in Enagic is scaring people off before they have the chance to see it. Most people that really see Kong and Water and Enagic for what it is, with an open mind, exposed properly, enroll. They buy the machine, they do the business, they get involved in some regard with what we're doing. It, but the only ones that don't are the ones that don't see it the right way. And what happens then is they share with others. They share with others the, the apparent failure or, down, or downside to Enagic, that it doesn't work, that the water didn't work for them or, or it, didn't, it didn't look right or something. It's when they're not exposed properly. So we must be exposing properly. And the best way to expose people properly is to follow the simple steps outlined here. And any training that you go to in our organization or for that matter, with any magic, they're gonna be teaching you the same basic things. They're teaching to share the water, to share the business, to build events. That's it. And to do three-way calls, okay? Our business is very, very simple. The things that, take, that earn us money in this business take a very, very short time. I can get off this call today and I can cash out three or four times within 30 minutes. 
and legitimately have good meetings set up for next week. And that's what we're doing is when you start doing these every day, you, they become a habit. And then you start doing them when you're not even thinking about them. And then you're driving down the road and you realize, oh, wow, I just cashed out three times. I just set two appointments for next week and I just shared water with a new person or I, I set up a time to share water with a new person. Hey, it doesn't take long to do it. And that's why we say you could buy your, buy your time and your freedom back in this business. Because when you get dialed in to how to really work this business and you have a system to follow, it can be done in a very short time. I can get an entire work day in in 30 minutes, oftentimes. And then have the rest of the day to go do whatever it is that I want to do. And that's what it's all about in the first place. We want to be freeing ourselves up to live the lives that we want to live. Does that make sense? Okay. So I want to, we got 15 ish minutes left. I want to take a few minutes and just kind of open it up here. And, and I see that you're there and you've been involved in this business a little bit now. Hi, is it okay if I unmute you or can you unmute yourself? There you go. So I just wanted to kind of talk to you for a few minutes about uh, how long, how long have you been involved in Enagic now? About six months? Oh, you're cutting out. What did you ask? Uh, how long have you been? How long have you been officially involved in Enagic? Hmm. Can you hear me? Anne? I think we lost Anne. Can everybody else hear me? Okay. I see a thumbs up from I see a thumbs up from Dan and Liz. Okay, well, hopefully we'll get Ann back in a minute here. Um, actually, let's bring Dan back on. Dan, why don't you unmute yourself and just share with me the what the first uh, two or three months of your business looked like in Enagic when you first got involved and and um, what that looked like for you. Well, I I don't know if I'm going to be the best example because when I first bought my machine, I didn't really intend on. Um, you know, the business really wasn't a focal point for me. I um, actually shared the water for the first time with a guy at my dealership who had actually walked by and said, you know, I, I see that bottle and I heard it helps with acid reflux. And I was like, I don't know. I got mine for my cholesterol. I really didn't, I mean, I really didn't understand the ramifications of what I had or anything. So, you know, my first 45 days, anyway, by the way, this guy drank the water for six, seven days, said he felt amazing, wanted to buy one. He bought a machine and about four or five days later, maybe a week later, his mom bought a machine from him. And that's when I was kind of like, huh, okay. And then he started telling me about his mom's health issues and things like that. So my first, you know, my first sale didn't happen for 45 days, but, um, I don't think my path is the, was the same because I didn't come in it with just the intention to um, just work it as a business. I was just really, really enjoying the experience of the water and um, just thoroughly enjoying how much better I felt than I had in a long time. So, Well, actually, that's the reason I asked, Anna, because I know that you, you had no intention of doing this. In fact, you had very, very low goals set for yourself. For the right the first year or so of your business yeah i my really my only goal is i just thought well god i've heard that you know i can end up so my equipment kind of pays for itself that'd be nice to kind of have all this and have it be free that would be kind of cool but i did make some um some modest aspirations i guess <laughs> which is funny because I look back out and I was talking to my talking to my new guy yesterday and I believe he's on here with Dana and he was like, you know, I want to do, you know, this many units a month. I want to do this. I want to do this. And I'm like, wow. I mean, I, I just, you know, I didn't have that, you know, when I first came in, I didn't come in with that fire. I just came in knowing I felt a ton better. And, um, you know, obviously my body felt amazing for the first time in a long time, but I just didn't have the huge aspirations. I, I still have it actually upstairs. And when I go and speak at events, sometimes I bring it, but my three year goal was 41 machines. <laughs> How many have you done now? Oh, hundreds and hundreds. Yeah. And, and by the time the three, I mean, I was already six, eight, two before I, before the three years was up. So yeah. So. 
So I always tell people this is a good lesson because I've had a lot of people. And then um, my biggest business builder to date um, has done over 140 something machines. And his first words to me were, but I'm never going to sell one of these. You know, I don't, I don't want to talk to people about water. So, you know, that, that's the other thing I will say to people that are new. Um, don't listen to people. And, and I love this too, because Jordan's on the here, I believe. And he was talking to Dana yesterday and saying, whenever people give you a reason that they don't want to buy or they think they can't afford it or the other machines are better, he says, just know that you know more than them and don't listen to them. And I thought that was amazing advice coming from a, a 21 year old um, young man, because he really is right. I mean, everything I thought I knew about this business and 95% of the rebuttals that I get, they're not even real objections. Right. People just really don't have any idea what they're saying no to. And so if you're passionate about what you're doing and they see that in you and you truly build value, the money of the machine really becomes a no brainer. But of course, anybody's going to think it's expensive if we're not building value. And that's why, you know, the education, like what you're talking about, third party validation, get them to something else. You brought up Saturday and here's a key point for anybody that's on here. If, if anybody says to me they have any kind of time of the week that I can kind of pick it, I will always pick Saturday about 1.15 at the office because it's later in the day. They're opening for the first time. People are walking in and I'll tell somebody, meet me at 1.15 on a Saturday. They've been open 10 minutes. They walk in. There's five people standing there in line getting water. Three, four people up at the desk trying to process machines. 10, 15, 20 people around waiting on a meeting. And people walk in there and they go, huh. You know, and instead of me being the weird guy talking about water, they walk in there and feel like, man, maybe I'm missing out on something huge. You know, how did I not know about this, right? And so... It, Saturday happens to be an amazing time to intro people to that office. It really, really is. My, my conversion rate when I take people to that Saturday is very, 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 very high. I was just thinking that. I was just, and that's why I said that. And I, I made sure to include that in the invitation that went out yesterday. By the way, if you're not on my distribution list, Steve at truehealthvision.com. Just send me an email, say, hey, get me on your distribution list if you're not getting any of the communications about those events. But I did say that in that invitation. The, 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 the conversion rate for those Saturday events is extremely high. And, and if I can throw in just one more thing, I mean, there's, there's an amazing amount of validity in bringing somebody to the office. It's an amazing store. They see the text. They see the people. With the new girl we brought on yesterday, she said, so this is the office. And Liz said to her, no, this is your office. You know, and the girl was just beaming with pride. You know what I mean? And, and the thing about that is, even at that though, as special as it is, it's very, very different on a Wednesday afternoon at 1.30 than it is on a Saturday afternoon when they walk in because excitement breeds excitement and people look in and see all that activity and it, and it does the role reverses rather than I'm, I'm going to look at this, whatever to, wow, how did I not know about this? Look at all these people. Look at, look at everybody's filling up jugs and processing orders and you know, everybody's talking and they're excited and people want to get involved when they see that kind of, you know, legitimate activity. Yep. The office guys is the most underutilized resource we have right now. It's, it's a shame how underutilized that office is. There's, uh, I go in there so often, 90% of the time I go in there and both meeting rooms are empty. Yeah. The lights off. I mean, guys, that's available to you. That little conference room is so perfect for meeting the new clients for the first time or for doing a small tabletop demo. You're just going in there and quickly showing the business plan on the, on the dry erase board if there's markers that actually work in the room. <laughs> But, um, and Steve, can I, can I chime in and say one thing though? And, um, but what I will say about the Pacific Northwest group, which is amazing is because, you know, I'm always talking to new people about not only where we are today, but where this thing is going. And when we're talking about underutilizing the office, I do want to point out though, but six months ago, that calendar sat on the wall virtually empty and right. all of those rooms sat there empty. And when I walked in there yesterday, you know, there's 18, 20, 22 spots taken up. People are grabbing Saturdays, grabbing the conference room. So it, we are really starting to utilize that office in a productive way. And I would certainly encourage anybody, and I don't care if you bought your machine yesterday or, you know, you're a 6A33, 
you know, go in that, put on events. I mean, like Steve said, well, I mean, I don't, I don't go in there with Steve to do that for me and Steve, I go and do it. So, you know, like Dave on here can bring somebody new and I can show them the, the, the prosperity of trifecting in rather than just getting a junior for themselves. I mean, I do that for the people that are sitting in the seat, not, not for me. So, you know, that's why we're doing that. So we can show the opportunity and really build value because if somebody's sitting on the fence thinking about price, when they watch that business demo, I mean, everybody that watches Steve Beaumont's water demo, if you look at that at the end of it and you tell me, I don't know, eight people on the planet in the next four years that would want to see this, then, you know, we're good. You know what I mean? But the thing is, you watch that water demo and your mind just starts racing about all the people that you would want to introduce this. And then you see the business plan and it just makes so much sense that if you own an enagic device and it doesn't end up being free, that's just shame on you. Cause you're just, you're, you're just committing an offense by keeping it to yourself and never telling anybody when you should at least be sharing it with the people you love and care about. Yeah. What a phenomenal point, Dan. I forget who it was that first made the first brought into that light. And they said, they said, don't be selfish. Oh, I heard it on a Saturday morning call, actually. Uh, well, Daniel, Daniel D. McCauley be says it best. He says, you know, if somebody walked up to you with a magic bean and it cured all kinds of ailments and it gave you better sleep and it gave you better energy and it gave you a better attitude and it, and it you know, changed your outlook on life and a and hundred other things and you only had 10 of them, he goes, are you going to go to Amazon and just hawk them, you know, to the highest bidder? Are you going to give them to the people that you love the most? And so the thing is, it goes back to we want to share this with the people we care about because when we uncover what's going on with the bottled water industry and everything else like that, we do want people to know, but we also have to take a step back, get our bearings and, and have a little knowledge so that we can educate them in a responsible way to where we don't just sound like, well, wait a minute, three weeks ago, he's drinking a Dr. Pepper and now he's a, now he's a water, you know, expert. Well, we, we can't, it's tough to make that transition. So it is best to say, Hey, I've got this girl I met at a yoga festival and she's a vegan. I'm going to get Ann on the phone. Why? Because it's going to take a lot of heat off of Dan. Because, because Ann can speak a language to that person that I may not necessarily be able to do. And Ann's probably going to do vice versa. If she gets somebody who's like, you guys got great water, but I'm, I'd like to make some money. Hey, terrific. You know what? Let me, let me put you on the phone with a good friend of mine. And so, and you know, we all have each other to utilize and the office is certainly a huge, huge part of that. Yeah, like I said, it's such an underutilized um, resource that we have. And but, but I tell you what, the more people we get into that office, the higher energy we have. You put people, I mean, the Saturday morning, we're going to have much more energy in that event if there's 50 people than if there's only 15 people. So they're going to get a better show. They're going to get a better presentation. They're going to get a better me, a better Dan, an overall better experience. So just please make it a priority to get people there on Saturday afternoon into all the events, the Tuesday trainings, guys, it's not for Dan and I, it's for you. That's for your teams. We want that six months from now. We want that room full of your people, your new people that you bring in between now and then. That's our vision for the next six months. What's your vision for the next six months going to be? And that's kind of my action call between now and the next, the next time we meet guys is think about it. What do you, what do you want the next six months from your Enagic business? Because I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the calendar now. We're already halfway through October. So we have November and then half of December because the second half of December doesn't really count. Okay guys. So we got like 60, 45 to 60 really hard days to go. But the next six months of your Enagic business is going to be determined by what you do between now and Christmas. Okay, I'm going to say that again because it's that important. The next six months of your business, the next year of your business is going to be directly impacted by what you do between now and Christmas. If you do nothing between now and Christmas, then you're going to do nothing between January and March 1st because you're not gonna have any business in the funnel. If you create your momentum right now, starting today, October 11th, I think, and you carry that, you carry that momentum through Christmas, through January 1st, then you are gonna explode 
out of 2019 and whatever your goals, whatever your visions are, are going to happen. So whatever you have to do to get into all out massive action right now, today, this week and finish 2018 strong guys, if you're brand new, I promise you in, that if you listen to me and you take this advice, you will thank me next year. I promise. I don't make promises that I can't keep. It's that important that you finish 2018 strong. So that's my action call to you guys. Get clear on what you want to accomplish. What rank do you want to be? How many people do you want to help? And um, I'm really excited about the future with you guys. And I'm really excited about the group that we have. And I appreciate each and every one of you. Stay tuned for uh, when we're going to be picking these up again. We're going we're gonna to kind of, we might do a time adjustment on the future webinars. I'm going to kind of confer with a few people. But uh, like I said, stay tuned for when the next one will be. But I look forward to seeing all of you guys on Saturday. And um, again, thank you for your time. God bless you. Have an awesome, Have an awesome. Thank, thank you, Steve. You. You're amazing. Thank you, Steve. Love you. <laughs> Lee loves you. <laughs> Lee, sir. You silly boy. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.